Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm from uh, Ministry of Energy and Mines, Department of Energy Policy and Planning. So first of all, I would like to thank for member country, uh, for Mekong member country to uh, recommendation feedback for feasibility study of uh, uh, Mekong local banks. It's really useful for consultant to approve feasibility study in terms of technical environment and also economic. So I would like to present based on a recommendation and to to satisfy of the Mekong Ilongpa Bank feature. Maybe some uh, participants are here, maybe didn't know about the background of Ilongpa Banks. I had a part project, so I would like to present. So I would like to confirm the terms with uh, Dr. Anilak has 10, 10 minutes, about three songs. Eh? <laughs> about three songs. <laughs> Just kidding. So I would like to brief some introduction, general reviews, fish migration, navigation, and existing infrastructure and sediment management. So uh, in this presentation, I would like to also demonstrate of the fish fish passes. So the project overview of Mekong's Lungha Bang is located on Mekong kilometer 2036 in Lungha Bang province, Lapidia, and about 25 kilometers upstream of the city of Lungha Bang. Uh, the, the location is sit on uh, Pak Bang upstream and downstream is Sanyaboli. So the components of uh, hydropower was designed by Poili also, this is a concept design in terms of feasibility studies scope of work. So there are six components, important six components. The first is a, a spin-based structure. There are three low-level outlets, a six surface spin-way total capacity about 40,000 uh, 40, cubic meters per second. And also auxiliary powerhouse, three carbon turbines, uh, total capacity is 60 megawatt. And the third one, the power house, there's seven cup plants, uh, about 200 megawatt of each unit. Inside the charge, about 5,355 cubic meters per second. The total capacity, about 1,400 megawatt. And other one is uh, upstream migration. Uh, Diversion is wrong during construction and trends along the powerhouse with the two fish rock at the left spur. And downstream uh, migrations, the right pearls and trends above the power intakes at uh, terminals and structure and chute. And the last one is a navigation lock, a two step navigation lock, about two multiplied find this. And also total leaf high is uh, 35.5 meters. This is uh, all components of uh, Pabang Hydro Power Projects development. In terms of hydrology, the projects only also the uh, consultant also uh, collects many information, especially the study about the uh, Lansang caskets, also and also some uh, hydrology cones, land of models, 60 year uh, approach. Uh, cannabis using the first four years of full operation in Lansang Casket. Uh, after that, they, they, they also uh, study for impact of Lansang Casket. Uh, the, the results are significantly higher than uh, anticipated. The positive effect due to higher than dry season flood. Uh, sedimentation, the Lansang Casket, uh, heavy uh, impact of sediment reaching in the lower Mekong. Uh, for the GOGs, the science investigation about laboratory testing, the carry out. And uh, GOGs, uh, volcanic rocks and uh, limestone, and also uh, additional investigation ongoing. Right now, I, I think this is very finished soon for the uh, furthermore additional uh, wounding, drilling. Uh, for seismic, the seismic condition have been um, checked and and the following conclusion have been made. The active fronts about uh, 10, uh, two, uh, 10, uh, 10 and 20 kilometers away from the dam site. 
the medium seismic, the probabilistic and the demonstrative, and the seismic hazard assessment carried out, and knowledge of the reservoir ticket uh, seismicity. And for the dam safety, they also a uh, demonstration of the dam breaks analysis based on the following scenarios. The failure modes of the concrete gravity dams are the giving in icon and bulletin in uh, 99 and uh, 101. Uh, 11. And dam break based on the 100 year flood. And the peaks of the dam break floods will be arranged the, the PMF flood. Uh, the main powerhouse, the barracks, the Chai powerhouse, the seven units, uh, 200 megawatt, and total installed capacity about one, uh, 1,400 megawatt. And speedway, also, I, I have been mentioned before. Uh, for the navigation locks, uh, two state navigation locks. Uh, so, uh, same design of the dimension like navigation lock in Sayaburi. Uh, fish migration overview. So, you can see here that the, the fish can move up from downs to upstream and upstream to downstream in the, in the uh, full structure, like auxiliary powerhouse use of water flow in the dust from downstream migration for upstream migration uh, additional water uh, upstream attracts well and upstream migrations uh, multiple entrance along the power house to fish lock downstream downstream migration entrance about power how it takes a fish fairly to buy and right bank fish migration the separated from the navigation lock and fish lock open, open channel so the fish migration uh, system generals are uh, the, the approach in this study uh, also uh, compliance with MRC guideline. Uh, also same uh, functionally like Sayabuli and experience about the fish migration system in Sayabuli. So you can see, I would like to uh, demonstration of the fish process. So uh, this uh, <coughs> this demo demonstration made by a poly. So downstream migration. And upstream fish migration from powerhouse, left bank. But I don't know exactly what kind of fish. There are lots of way for the fish. I think that that is a stop lock. Uh, from right bank fish lock. They also approach leaf in the dam. Maybe sometime we should be training the fish how to use leaf. That stream fish migration from powerhouse.
Yes. So navigation lock design operations, also design uh, and layout of navigation locks following the recommendation of MRC design light. Uh, also all requirements have been addressed adequately in the design and edit and additional second navigation locks is indicated design documents. Also, it's really important that during navigation construction, also navigation requirements up to the 8,000 cubic meter per second, a safety navigation in the main channel is possible. Uh, number of models, 2D model, and conclusion, the outscrop out uh, re removal to improve navigation navigability uh, supporting during construction and uh, sediment development in the lower Mekong basins they also study for the sediment data and all, all available data collected uh, impact on upstream Lansang cascades uh, reductions from uh, 110 million ton per year, about 20, about 20 and two, uh, 24 million ton per year. So sediment management, as I mentioned before, there are six, uh, six flushing. The sediment management is uh, inverted into the road as a mass sediment uh, through the low level outlets and turbine. Uh, also, the, the lower level outlets are first get open uh, beyond uh, Mekong flow, uh, 5,355 uh, cubic meter per second. And also, the, this will be able to lock sediment concentration, uh, flow downstream navigation, environment impacts, and mainstream similar sediment con concentration and, uh, as the natural condition. Uh, the excess uh, geometry of the approach uh, channels will be evaluated in the hydraulic model test currents ongoing. And also, we, we also think about the uh, uh, railway bridge across the Mekong River. This is to confirm from study not affected to, to the bridge uh, during operation of hydropower. Yes, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vitoon. Uh, it's uh, interesting uh, with visualizations of the uh, Lung Prabang fish pass. Um, so uh, since the morning, we have heard a lot of presentations. So uh, now it's time that we would like to have some interactions exchange with the participant in the room. So uh, we will have uh, maybe five minutes for questions reflections, comments, or any uh, suggestions on how we should move on in the next items. Yeah, uh, Professor uh, Lilaito. Uh, yeah, please can you uh, use a standing microphone and can you please uh, quickly introduce yourself? Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, let me first of all uh, thank the MRC for uh, inviting me to this second forum. And uh, I would like to congratulate MRC for organizing this second forum. I always regard, uh, regard the MRC as one of the most important organizations that can organize a, uh, what I call multi-track Mekong Dialogue track one, track two, and track three. And I've been advocating that all along in my presentations in China, in Thailand, and elsewhere. So congratulations. If I may, I'd like to look at some of these uh, consultations by the various uh, national committees. Very, very uh, specifically, I would like to address my comments and questions to the Lao National Mekong Committee. I remember last time when I took part in the forum, 
uh, raised the issue of uh, the funding for the project, namely that what sort of sources of funding will you be able to get? And the response from a Lao representative at that time was that it has to conduct a feasibility study. I wonder if you can tell us a bit about the progress of this feasibility, uh, feasibility study. That's my first question. The second question I have in mind is that uh, while you build dams, whether it's in Sayaburi or in you know, Long Brabant and so on and so forth, who are the people that will benefit from all these projects? In other words, what are the beneficiaries that you have in mind when you build this project? I would appreciate it if you can tell us a bit more about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, for your support to the MRC and also maybe for our future collaboration. Um, so uh, there are two questions to the Lao government. Uh, first is about background of feasibility study, any uh, further information to share, any background information to share, and also about the beneficiary of a hydropower project. Uh, maybe um, we can proceed uh, to another question, comments, suggestions, and uh, we can come back to the answer or the response. Yes, I saw one one lady. Yeah, maybe you you have a question, comments. Yeah. Hi, um, journalist from Vietnam. I'd like to raise a question for a representative from uh, Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand. Uh, how do you see the impact of hydropower dams at this time to lower countries? And uh, what are your recommendations for cooperation to reduce the negative impacts? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I think in the presentation, we talk a lot about impact, but maybe if the member country can summarize the impact and maybe some uh, expected mitigations measure. Um, so uh, do we have uh, any other common suggestions? Um, uh, if not, maybe we can, can we have any responses from the uh, either Cambodia, Lao, Thailand. On the journalist um, questions, or maybe uh, any further sharing by Laos uh, on the feasibility study. Yeah, uh, Dr. Vitun, please. First well, so of all, I would like to thanks for Professor to uh, make the comment. As as you know, uh, uh, hydropower developments in Laos, uh, we are we are we are follow up the uh, concept of IPP, IPP independent of hydropower producer. So there are many stage. The stage one should be complete uh, feasibility study. After that, the project owners maybe knows about the uh, basically on, on finance and on how much of budget to be to be uh, construction. After that, they, they, they will continue to cite PDA with Lao government project development. After, after the complete uh, PDA, they also carry on uh, uh, arrangement of the power purchase agreement. Maybe in Thailand, um, I, as I understand, this project there will be will be included in the PDP of ECAT plan planning or not. After they, they, they complete the power purchase agreements, they will uh, going to sign concession agreements with Lao government. After that, they will construction can be construction of the projects. But the finance, it should be many, many joy stage holder. 
it's not I, I think because of lack side of power projects they are they are provides many uh, stakeholders to join shareholding and also the how to allow governments uh, can be can be the fits of the projects as as you know there are there are many many benefits like the low corn benefits benefit from cell electric, electricity selling uh, benefit from uh, uh, manpower during construction for our PDR also benefit of long terms like uh, migrations of environments example of Fisley they also make the Fisley also uh, there are lots of benefits but but uh, the government should be uh, should be uh, indicate indicates of, of this uh, benefits to to the public. As I uh, right now in in the Mekong Idol Power Developments, uh, for me also we we are implementing of the Mekong's uh, sustainable of hydro power developments. And also the the next uh, the next step I would like to inform to the member country. The Lao PDR are going to member of ICON, uh, in International Commission on Large Dam. Maybe next month we, we are will be member and we, we, maybe we will gain more knowledge from uh, experience from the world. For Lao PDR, yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bitun. Yes, um, Dr. Uh, Chantanet, you may want to add. My name is Chantanet. I am the DG of the Secretariat of the Lao National Mekong Committee. So I would like to share with our friends here, who, especially the the questions. So it's my idea. The first uh, issue is about the. I think the APS, the PCB study, we too already mentioned about the progress. So the second issue is about the um, beneficiary, something like that. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we pay very much attention on the how to uh, improve the proposal of the Long Prabang Dam in order to minimize the impacts uh, to the Mekong Basin. That, that, that already the uh, intention from us, from Lao PDR, to uh, make the things better, not to impact much to the downstream or upstream countries. Yeah, that the first uh, principle from our side and uh, especially we do the consultation for the six months our intention is to get the comments the ideas from the stakeholders in order to improve the project proposal for example the sedimentation issues the navigation the fisheries issues or dam safety and also water quality and also others issues yeah, you raise. Uh, we've been considered these things seriously. Of course, uh, we've been considered on the comments, but uh, ask you to be frank with you that uh, some comments may be implementable, but some of the comments may be it's too expensive or technology is not available. So this thing we have to uh, put in our database. Maybe we can consider in the future action, something like that. So when we, when the technology or the knowledge available. Yeah, I think it's, it's there that the intention of our team, of our uh, government, of our country to improve ourselves. So beneficiaries, to me, it's, we do the, I think uh, everybody, I think every country use the Mekong basins, but in, based on the potential, like agriculture or fisheries. Or for us, we have the potential on the hydropower development because it, 
we don't have the right fins. We have mountainous to to two thirds of our territory is mountains. So we have to build the dam. So that, that's our choice. So, but we do this. We have to uh, focus the consultation with the downstream, with the member country in order to improve our proposal, not just do it and uh, 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 by ourselves, by our decision and uh, ourselves uh, alone. So as you may already uh, know that we sell the electricity to the American countries. So that that also, I think to me, it, 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 it contributes to the uh, economy and development of the, our member countries. Even now, we transfer to the ASEAN, to Singapore, somewhat. Uh, that it is the energy, and, and, uh, how to say, the city in our region. So that, that also, it's one thing. Uh, and of course, I want to focus again that uh, we, we do it by hearing, by listening to, to you, how we improve ourselves in order to minimize the impacts to, to the Mekong basins. That I think that the, the third uh, issue, the question is about the impacts, I think I, I already covered. So we are very happy to hear, uh, and then we would like to thank you also the comments and, and uh, uh, giving to us so far, and, and we would like to hear more comments from you, yeah. So we are happy to hear the comments, yeah, and to share. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chantanet. Uh, so uh, we still have uh, one question by the Vietnamese journalist about the impact and maybe joint action and joint efforts by member country. Uh, and I just saw, um, uh, Doctor, uh, have one more. Uh, be, be, before come to your question comments, uh, may I uh, inform that we also have received uh, questions uh, from the Facebook. Um, question come from the Bantan Mark. He is a representative of the NGO Forum in Cambodia. Uh, due to some uh, uh, problem, they register but could not uh, come to attend our forum. So the question is about the climate change and its impact. Um, in case of major climate change will occur, uh, for instance, if in any case flood or drought situation happen, it will generate a huge impact on people downstream. How to manage if climate change occurs? So that is the question we will raise and then maybe we will come back uh, during the today to address uh, those uh, questions common and also for your information that in the afternoon uh, before closing the P PMPCA for Lumpur Bam project we have uh, at 4 p.m. we have the reflection on feedback by uh, Lao PDR by MRCS and also maybe by notifying country so maybe it also can address to uh, the question regarding to the impact and joy efforts, joy actions. Uh, yes. Thank you. My name is Quang. I'm an independent consultant from Vietnam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chantanet, for your explanation. And I would like to talk about the Wing Wapang project in combination with other projects, not itself not isolated project, you see. I think we know that impact from Long Propang project in New Yorkers have to go through Sayaburi to downstream, not directly to downstream, you see. And also maybe some impact from upper project, the Park Bank also combined with this. So this means that the impact of uh, Goals by operation of uh, inter-reservoir is very important. So I remember that in the last uh, forum, we raised this issue about the, technically, the developer needs to consider to have an uh, optimized uh, regime of inter-reservoir operation to minimize the impact to downstream. 
So, so how this issue has been addressed for the time being, or the law PDA uh, agency have a request developer or the consultant to consider this issue. And also, this question relating to the timing for consultation, to avoid the lesson from previous consultation, that means that within six months only, we cannot extend for further additional time. And this technical issue maybe need more time for study, for consider. So if in the case, the time of the notification will have only two more months, too short for consideration, how we can cope with this issue, whether extended period is needed. No. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kwang, uh, one local NGO in Vietnam. Yes, Professor Achan. Uh, yeah. So actually, uh, at the ACE Forum, we also have a lot of question and discussion with the JC panel about the extension of the six-month uh, PMPCA. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have note all the concern, comments, but uh, yeah, maybe uh, Achan, you want to? Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, my name is Chayut, uh, TMC uh, Technical Advisor. Just would like to respond to the, the, the question from our Vietnamese colleague uh, regarding uh, TNMC or Thailand view regarding the how, how should we look at the, the, the impact. Uh, actually, we, we have already mentioned this to our Lao colleague during the, the national consultation as I think my colleague Kun Bungida already informed the meeting, but I, I think it, it uh, should be good to reiterate again because we, I just heard from my, my dear friend Quang raised a similar issue and, it, and I think it fit with the view that we, we always look at the similar way because as we know that Luong Prabang is upstream from, from Chayaburi. So they, we know that from, for example, the flow condition, uh, whatever happened regarding the operation of Luong Prabang will be detected or will be regulated, you know, by Chayaburi. And this is also true with the future project on Park Lai or Sanakam or, or the rest of the system. So I think our concern when we raise this issue uh, to, to respond to our Vietnamese colleague is always the issue of the, the joy or the combined operation of the, the whole cascade. It's not only the, you know, the issue that we discuss here is not even though that we are talking about Luong Prabang, I think the concern is about the, the joy operation of the whole cascade. So just would like to, I think, reiterate, I think, the, the, the chair view that we have. But why the issue of the, the cumulative impact, you know, it, it become uh, evidence and, and very, it becomes a, one of the most uh, immediate, I think, question that we, we, we should jointly discuss and, and try to find a way uh, to, to proceed with this, uh, you know, the so-called cumulative impact. Even though that we, we have been, been discussed about this for many, many years. But in the past, you know, it, it just, uh, no actual project implemented yet. You know, it will be easy or freely to discuss about this. And that's why we did not uh, come to the conclusion on, on, on the scope of the, the issue on the cumulative impact for which I think now we have to, to, to discuss a lot on, on how we are going to define the scope, you know, because it is so easy to talk about uh, cumulative impact, but 
when you want to implement it, you know, how, how do you define the scope? Uh, having said that, I would maybe turn the question back to the, the Secretariat. Uh, this is due to the fact that I think after so many criticism about our PNPCA process, and then after Park Lai and Park Bang, we, we came up with the Joy Action Plan and, and the so-called the, the GEM, the Joy Environmental Monitoring that I think the Secretary report to this meeting. But I think we, we have not heard the status of this Joy Environmental Monitoring and how this activity fit the ongoing activities of the monitoring program of the Chayaburi, which we know that I think uh, Chayaburi is, is, is carried out this kind of monitoring activity as well. So perhaps maybe on from the secretary side, could you could you share you know the progress or the information about this you know, the ongoing gym of the MRCS with you have any collaboration with the ongoing activities of the of the Shayabuli? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ajahn. We Sunam, can uh, you quickly give us a brief update on Jam? Thank, thank you, Ajahn. Uh, uh, so I would like to to inform the the progress. It's very well progress, Jam and. And last year, by the end of last year, we finalized the overall GEM program and the two pilot monitoring at the uh, Sayabori and uh, Dongzhong project. And during the development of the program, we, we, we actively participate uh, in wider participant from Sayabori, Dongzhong, Pa Beng, Pa Lai. And, uh, so far, till today, we already designed the two pilot, and now we already uh, uh, procure all the uh, equipment plan has been planned, and and the design of the, the the pilot program is going to finalize this month or next month, and uh, the training, all the training will start soon uh, from from next week or the week after. And the training will last for from February to, to June, and we will also involve inviting, uh, going to invite uh, all the dam development pro owner project to attend our training, especially their research team, the environment research team, the water quality, the fishery, the eco eco to health, the settlement hydrology team to join our training, really to to not only learn the technique, but also gradually integrate our protocol into their existing monitoring protocol. So this is the, the long term. And uh, by the end of this month, we will uh, organize an expert group on the inception phase of the GEM pilot in Nong Kai 2021. I think we already invite the five uh, hydropower developer, the Dong Chong Sayaburi, Pak Lai, Pak Beng. Even we also invite Sanakam, who is coming soon. So we hope you can join and then listen to our uh, program and the two pilot and how can this program and two pilot can help your program, not only for one project. The purpose is to have this optimal coordination uh, operation for, for for managing hydrology, sediment, water quality, aquatic ecology, fishery, transboundary, especially the the upper cascade Lao Dam from from Sanakam, the new Sanakam coming through Chiang Chiang Kham, Chiang San. So this is the first uh, the first straight of the river we really focus on, and then in the long term we will uh, further uh, integration of mainstreaming of this jam program uh, downstream Vieng Chan up to the Mekong Delta to have a best in wide perspective as far as a, a, a individual project assessment also. Thank you. Thank you, Sunap. Uh, 
so thank you very much for all the common suggestions. So we all see just um, um, cumulative impact, chance boundary impact, cascade operations uh, will be uh, our common concern and interest. And uh, uh, yes, uh, maybe uh, yeah. Dr. Uh, Chantanet, you want to add now? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, just to give you the information about the cascades uh, dam operations management. So the Lao government, especially to uh, Ministry, Ministry of uh, Energy and Mines and our, our Ministry, Ministry of uh, Natural Resources and Environment, uh, we have uh, uh, cooperate together to uh, set up the system to manage how we coordinate the dams on the dams in Lao PDR, not only the mainstreams, but also the the, uh, the uh, dams in the tributaries. So we have already hired the French uh, company to design the, what we call the monitoring center, something like that. We have finished last year. And now we have some already facilities and uh, we plan to do more and to set up the center, this center to monitor. And also we have, uh, uh, how to say, the, the improve our uh, legal framework. So every dam should report the, the uh, operation uh, uh, how to say the operation and planned uh, for each times for years for years and we can check not to the plan the operation the 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 the, the, the storage and the, the the release system should not impact to the uh, in case of uh, flood and drought so that we improve ourselves now so that uh, and the second thing that uh, I would like to share the ideas that I think that uh, if we talk about the community impact, of course, uh, the impact uh, should, link, should link to the, the dams, but also I believe that the impact also is from others part, not only from Laos, but also from other countries. So we have to consider as I mentioned in last uh, in the last meeting, that if we try to cope with the issue uh, like uh, drought this year, we have to look at the flow from the tributaries, but not just from Laos, but also from China, from other countries. So that uh, I think that in our MRC, we are working together. Yeah, that very big progress. We have several meetings, and we have. Uh, uh, accept the strategy on the flood management. I think that uh, it's a, it did a big steps for us to work together. Yeah, thank you. That I would like to share with you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chantanet. Uh, thanks for saying it about the uh, new project on dry catch gate operation and management. Uh, maybe if possible, if we can say information later on. Uh, so, um, we are now at 11.30 and we are behind behind schedule, one hour behind schedule. Uh, so for the next um, agenda item, we will have uh, um, discussions on the technical review report. And before going to the parallel discussion, we will have a present, soft presentation by the MRCS team. Uh, so uh, uh, can we ask for maybe a little bit um, uh, later lunch because we will, uh, we will need about, even though we try to have 10 minutes for each presentation, but it may, may take around uh, one hour. So maybe uh, we will try to accommodate to uh, um, certain uh, technical aspect, and then we can break for lunch and come back uh, with more presentations. And uh, so first, I would like to introduce Tim Lee to give us an overview of the draft technical review report. And for our MLCS presentation, we would like to... Uh, Emphasize on 10 minutes each. Uh, Tim Lee, yeah. 
please. Okay, thank you, Yu. So I will give very quick uh, overview of the uh, preparation of the technical review report as you already heard from the writer uh, this morning that the ultimate of this, this uh, assignment is to develop, to review and then develop the technical review reports that's common on the facility study uh, submitted by the LA government. So this is content of my uh, presentations. Uh, the, the last part is very important. I will uh, I reflect the, the uh, important issues in the technical review report that regard in regard to the cumulative impacts and also the, the cascade dam, the cascade dams that's uh, been raised by uh, 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 Vietnam and also Thailand. So this is a quick introduction. This is the fifth proposed use uh, following the prior consultation for Sayabari in 2010. So as, as you see, it's a break of four years. And then uh, Don Zhong in 2014-15, and then each year there is one mainstream dam uh, uh, submitted to MRC for the prior consultation process. And these five dams uh, total is uh, about 2,200 uh, megawatt in, in total. And then uh, among these five dams, four dams are located in upstream of the lower Mekong basins with a total capacity of, of about 2,000 megawatt. So the, the, the Lung Prabang is the largest in the upper part of, of the uh, lower Mekong basins. It's a uh, 1,400 60 megawatts, largest, uh, largest uh, among the four. So this is very important uh, uh, review, and then we need to consider cascade as, as, as a uh, uh, review. So we have already uh, uh, summarized the document submitted by the live PDR, and then we uh, include this in our website. And then we also develop uh, the scoping assessment report. This scoping assessment report presented to you uh, in the first forum. Uh, uh, in November. And this uh, scoping assessment report is talk about tools, approach, how we should review. And this uh, uh, have been included in, in the uh, uh, summary in, in the website. And we use it based on, uh, we re review based on MRC preliminary design guidance, PDG 2009. So this is the, the aim of the, tier, the technical review report is to provide an equitable basis for MRC Joint Committee to consider all viable and reasonable measures to avoid, minimize, and mitigate transboundary impacts. So the, the key term here is to avoid, minimize, and mitigate. So the, the review is aimed to that, that goal. This is the approach we based on the MRC framework for prior consultations that based on the 1995 Mekong Agreement and MRC procedure, and also uh, again, uh, in the Article 7 of the 1995 Mekong Agreements, it's, uh, one is to, to propose measure to avoid, minimize, and mitigate impact. So this, this is uh, what we aim for. And then uh, the next one is to identify opportunity for increasing joint benefit and cooperation, so uh, to explore. So these this are in, uh, working in progress. Approach, we also use the uh, PDG 2009, as I mentioned. And it's also, we focus on performance target. So how to get optimum performance for the, the dams, especially on operating, monitoring, adaptive management, etc. And we cross-check with these five disciplines in the PDG 2009 uh, as, as alignment. And then we, we check also against the, uh, we follow also the draft PDG 2019 uh, update on the good practices. That include two other disciplines that include livelihoods, uh, socioeconomics, and hydrology, and other aspects that is uh, more details of, of the five disciplines, this one. And other, we have this, all of these uh, MRC uh, documents that we uh, uh, also refer to, especially a uh, reason also uh, one on the uh, State of Basin Report 2018 that's uh, described on the issue of five dimensions, uh, environment, social, economics, climate change, and cooperation. So we have also, and then we also use uh, add uh, for uh, the past for PNPCA PC uh, technical review report as well, uh, because focus on the case case dams. And then also with the review report of the Sayab redesign chain. So all of this we consider in our review. The submitted document, I think uh, uh, live PDR have already uh, uh, presented and also uh, uh, countries also presented. So this, these are the documents submitted and then 
uh, actually, uh, LivePDA also uh, provide additional documents submitted on the 10th December in the form of uh, PowerPoint. All of this we have met during the second joint, uh, joint committee working group uh, meeting. And this uh, we have met with the developer and uh, additional information provided. So we have not yet included in our uh, uh, review of, of the second draft. So this additional document will be included in our third draft, uh, uh, in our final draft after this. So third draft means uh, final draft after this uh, uh, meeting. These are the content of technical review report, uh, background information, and then the technical review report uh, contains seven split disciplines. That's a, a, a review against a submitted document of this. And then we have conclusions uh, related to transboundary and cumulative impact, common recommendation and way forward contents. And this is an important issue to flag in the technical review report as uh, 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 questions uh, common uh, earlier is that now because uh, them becoming cascades uh, up on the upper part, we have four, four dams and also downstream as well, and also upstream in China as well. So we should consider uh, increased relevance of management of the cascade, uh, not only one dam, but, but multiple dams. On the conjunctive operation, so uh, again, operation, coordination are very important. And the need to align with the design parameter of all dams, so we have to check also against the design of the dams. And then uh, also increasing cumulative impacts options to consider the risk associated with the cumulative impact of the dam on both mainstream and tributary. So these are the, the, the things that we consider and that, that reflect in our technical review report. So uh, that's all. And then my uh, colleagues will, uh, will, will, will uh, uh, present you our result of the review report, the second draft, so that you can see more detail. And, and, and what you heard this morning from the country is that it's their, their first view on the, their review and also from the community as well. And uh, uh, we have al already uh, 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 sent this uh, draft document, draft technical review report to countries to, to comment. So all of this we'll consider in the final draft. Thank you. So that's my brief uh, introduction. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lee. Uh, so next, uh, we would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Chen uh, to present us the key finding for the hydrology and hydraulics. Thank you, Yu. So my presentation will focus on hydrology and hydraulics in the technical review report. So we have the same outline for the other discipline. And we will uh, give you the how we address the public com comment from the air regional stakeholder forum. So why hydrology and hydraulics are very important because it provide uh, it's, it is a uh, fundamental and provide basic information for other thematic analysis. So accurate information and analysis on hydrology are very essential during the, this feasibility study. And what we concern the risk for the, uh, the study from uh, the developer, we want to see how the operation of the dam contribute to change of the seasonal flows and daily fluctuation of the downstream flow. And the uh, developer use proper method or not to quantify the physical behavior of the river, its variability uh, in boiling and dry season, uh, consider upstream dam, little flow near the infrastructure, and etc. And the role of the Lompawang Dam in the Lao hydropower dam cascades also and contribution to other impacts. So for the first main review, we review the data use and the, the study uh, mainly use the data from Cheng San and Lompawang where we have a very long-term historical record. And they also have installed, um, they have made their own uh, monitoring with the uh, uh, one hour and 15 minutes frequency of data from uh, both tributary and Mekong mainstream, uh, tributary on Nam O, Nam Khan, and Nam Seung. And, and recently, we, we heard that they also uh, have installed uh, some monitoring station at the about two kilometer downstream of the dam. And, uh, and uh, they also they collect the water level and discharge data. And, uh, 
Besides the data collect from monitoring, yeah, they also use uh, extent, uh, intensive uh, satellite and for data for modeling purpose. For the discharge at the same side, the, the peak discharge are uh, derived from the data mainly up from Long Habang and Cheng San. Cheng San is upstream of Long Habang and, and Long Habang station is just uh, around uh, 25 kilometers. So, but we found that the, the in the simulation, they only include the operation of uh, Lantang Dam in China only, that the, the two main dam is uh, now Soju and Chiawan, but not the impact of other tributary development in Lao PDR, especially the uh, Park Bang and Sayapuri. So, we, we recommend that the data collected by the developer should be shared with MRC for further analysis and also including the keep the QAQC process. And the manually record rainfall should be used in the simulation instead of the uh, satellite rainfall. The potential impact of both climate change and upstream hydropower development should be included in the study and simulation too. And uh, we suggest additional modeling scenario uh, include the mainstream dam in China and downstream of Long Habang hydropower dam, including t release dam. The, the next finding for the tailwater calculation, the tailwater use uh, data collect at the uh, Supanu Bridge, which is a uh, downstream of the dam site, and the rating curve also uh, simulated based on this station. But, but, but the, the study do not uh, consider the impact the, of operation of Sayabuli Dam and also the Park Dam hydropower dam. So we suggest the the backwater effect of Sayabuli Dam should be included in, in the tailwater rating curves. And uh, also consider the change in the alluvian, alluvian deposit and flow from the Nam U River, which just a uh, five kilometer downstream of the Long Kabang Dam site. And we require the developer to share result of model calibration. For the design flood, we find that the flood peak uh, for 10,000 uh, return period. The Long Pabang hydropower, they, they adopt the flood peak. Those are fall within the high, higher part of the lane. So the, the value used by them can be considered conservative and, and on the safe side for the, for the uh, design. However, the impact of climate change and upstream development should be also included for frequency analysis. For the operation, now we still have a uh, since the last time we found that the, the dam now use the, the uh, normal operating level at 312, which is not very really different from what they agreed previously. But now the, the government of now has uh, is now conducting a further study and they will provide, they will, uh, provide uh, uh, they will explore the result from the ongoing study and then the final decision will be taken based on the results of the study. Meaning that the government of, of La are already well aware of this and they already consider how to address the issue of the different operating levels. So in case of the operating level of, of Long Havang Dam lower to 310, so the developer should uh, update all calculation and design for the structure. And also, we would like to, to hear more the elaboration in more detail on the expected joint operation move for spillway power generation reservoir system management. And the operating rules might be updated to provide uh, for specific environmental flow requirement and the uh, requirement for the, from the potential impact on Pabang World Heritage Site too. For the monitoring, we could not find information in the Feasibility report submit to us for review. However, we, we learned from them that the, the monitoring of the Long Habang hydropower will be connected to the existing Sayabuli system. So we require the developer or the government of law to provide further information for us. And we can address this in the, in the draft final of technical review report. And we suggest to follow the MRC and uh, the BMO guide guideline that we are currently applying to our high cost monitoring system. For the hydrology and hydraulics, the risk and concern that we uh, will be taking into consideration. So we, we learned that uh, because the size of the Pabang Dam 
is located in the, in the location that is influenced by the backwater effect from Sayubri Dam, and therefore there will be no free falling river section remain between these uh, two hydropower dams. Because the, the backwater from Sayubri defy the tailwater level at Lohabang Dam, and no river section remain, then the map that means that no natural flow condition. And in the upstream back of water of the Wongpabang also reached the territory of Park Bank. And we uh, highly strongly recommend that the, the cascade operation of these three run of river plants cause lower for velocity in the whole section. And we would like to learn more further analysis and how, how can they manage this. And maybe any list that may arise from, from this uh, low, uh, low velocity. However, the, the developer also recognize that this backwater can worsen sedimentation. So we will like to remark, because we, we, we are not sure how much the, the backwater effect remains, how close to the new room Habang dam from the Sayabuli backwater. And also another concern is the tributary in the upstream of the dam will experience a rise of the uh, water level and then erosion, some erosion and that will impact the upstream depending on the backwater length of the Lumpabang Dam. So here are the comments from the, we collect from the last stakeholder forum. The first one, the, the stakeholder concerned that no data from China to conduct the simulation. So we also found this information and we already addressed in the TRR report that, that they should, uh, uh, include other development also. For the second one, the forage in maintenance is an issue for the of the water fluctuation. What type of maintenance is uh, proposed? We will know that the, the dam ovulation for the water level and forage will be affected and impact on the bank erosion and land and landslide. But for the part the, uh, the, uh, the water capacity, they said that we will know hydro peaking because it is a pure runoff river dam. And they just use the operation length is only 0 0.5 meter for the operating length. And however, we already uh, addressed this aspect in the TRR section 5.4. The third one is the impact on normal water level impact from Sayaburi dam, as I just uh, addressed earlier that the wet water up, uh, from Sayaburi Dam to reach the Lompapang Hydro Power. And we provide information in detail in the report, section 3.1. And what can MRC do if there is no enough water in the North Home and community? Because I think you all know that we, we are the one that can indicate and advise the member countries on the issue based on data and research. And member country must take action in terms of helping and supporting the their own people in terms of critical situations. However, the Secretariat will continue to monitor and issue forecasting information and analysis. Those are related to the foliage rain or any impact or uh, rapid change in the in the stream of Mekong. And we also we also can discuss with the member country the issue and planning implementation for different measures at, at both regional and national level. And this is part of our uh, PMFF or procedure for uh, mainstream for monitoring process. So in the TR, this is my last slide. In the TR, we recommend the monitoring of the water level and flow at the dam site should be in, actually it's already and start and then continue to collect the data and the data can be used to validate the hydrology forecast models. The impact of the climate change and upstream hydro power development should be more advanced and more comprehensively. The learning curve at Supernewal is another concern that should be collected by the accounting the impact operation of the Sayaburi Dam. The joint operating rule, the joint operation rule should be elaborated in more detail for the spillway power generation, reservoir sediment management, etc. And the sensitivity of the water level to influence change in the aluminum deposit due to the NAM O and Rangabang development should be assessed and should also impact 
uh, you know, assess any impact of any possible change in the report. In the report, the plan additional hydraulic modeling for the filling of the impoundment should be also shared to the to the MRC for further review. Well, that's all my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Jin. Uh, so, in, at the uh, eighth forum, we already talked a lot about the methodology and approach. So, therefore, at this forum, we only focus on the key finding and recommendations. Uh, as mentioned by uh, Lee, uh, Dr. Lee, that uh, uh, the review look at five disciplines and uh, issue of social economics. Uh, so, due to time. Uh, um, may we propose that this morning we look at two disciplines. Uh, you just heard one, uh, hydraulics uh, and hydrology. And next, we will uh, listen uh, to key finding on sediment and river uh, morphology. And after that, we uh, break for lunch and then we will come back for other disciplines and uh, social economic issues. Uh, so I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Tuan to uh, uh, share with us the key finding for sediment uh, and uh, river morphology. Uh, thank you, you. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Wendy Tuan. I'm a hydro, hydrology and sediment expert uh, at MRCS. Now, I would like to present a um, uh, draft technical re report review on the sediment and uh, geomorphology for river bank hydropower. This is a micro, uh, the content of my presentation. Yes, um, this is, uh, on, include the background and then for re review findings. And uh, we uh, address uh, the own comments from the eight original uh, state forum and uh, recommendations. Uh, background. So, so we know that uh, sediment transport is very important to maintain the ecological function. So when we do a dam, so the sediment trapping behind the dam will increase uh, erosivity of the released water and it can destroy the, um, the and alter the existing habitats and uh, can erode the bank uh, of the river and uh, the sediment trapping uh, in empowerment uh, and near hydropower infrastructure can also reduce uh, its power output and pose a risk uh, to operations and also the fluctuation in water level uh, can cause the bank to slump into a river. So, including the reports and drawings, uh, with consideration um, MSC procedure and guidelines to provide a technical report, and we will re we will review uh, on data use, uh, proposed infrastructure, uh, sediment modeling, uh, monitoring and management plan, and the import and the important transparency impact. Um, this is main finding data use. Um, the provider uh, provide uh, very little relevant and consistent data in information uh, related to geomorphology and sediment transport and potential impact error in the region of the development. Um, they use the uh, literature review to provide the range of sediment uh, transport uh, variation and the role of land use uh, and upstream hydropower development uh, in effective uh, sediment transport in regional scale. And um, they also um, uh, collect some sediment data, uh, include rain size um, term samples in, uh, within the empowerment and uh, suspend sediment concentration, uh, six sample. Um, and uh, based on the literature review and uh, analysis, they suggest the total sediment load uh, at land, uh, that river bank dam side uh, reduced from 110 million ton per year for the case of pre dam to from 20 to 24 million ton per year. Uh, this, this number they used for uh, data input for sediment modeling later. So um, we think that's the, um, on those days, I think the literature review is very good starting point for PCB study. But uh, we think that the developer should use available information, uh, which is uh, related to sediment transport and um, under various MRC uh, studies um, in the past, uh, which will provide more 
information in Beijing wide uh, context in literature review. And um, the um, condition that the dam side uh, are not accurate uh, if, if we uh, capture by chain sand station and river bank station due, uh, due to the contribution from Nambu River uh, and tributaries. Um, so right now, no um, data and uh, specific data to um, verify the assumption. Um, so we suggest need the further information and discussion on impact of combined operation of Namu, Saloli, and Luobang Haru Power Dam. And also the